Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget. Today we're going to talk about these Saunders Machine Works hitch covers. It's a product that we make and sell. The reason is I've had a lot of folks ask lately for either basic or thorough SolidWorks and Sprut Cam demos. And one of the things I always struggle with is balancing the uh, running our own shop and making our own products as well as these videos. And so when there's an opportunity to combine the two, it makes sense to me. So the point is not necessarily self-promotion of a product we make, but rather um, let's talk about how we are going to machine these fixtures. I'm going to digress for a second to talk a little bit about the business side of this, which is these are kind of a swag fun product. They're not a super serious product and there's not a lot of input costs in terms of the raw materials, but in my opinion, this is something that you can really get burned on if it's too successful. In other words, if I sell two, three, four, five of these a day, no problem at all. If I start selling 40 of these a day, I've got a problem because I can lose my shirt really quick. We have no problem making these, but there's a lot of steps to them, and so it's a labor game. And you've got to be smart about it. On the flip side, this is how I've always grown my businesses in life. I've always started, and it's actually why I bought my Tormach to begin with, is let me do the small scale stuff. Once it gets big enough, I'm smart enough and I know enough about how things work when it's in a sort of run rate or pro forma situation of how do you do this at scale and whether that's in-house or outsourced or a combination of the two. So I'm at the point now where, um, believe it or not, or one of the reasons I like these and I think they sell pretty well is we, we, engrave, uh, we engrave USPSA um, grooves like you would see perforated cardboard in them. We also mess up the holes. I think they look like a pretty nice little product. We powder coat them and so forth. I'm actually gonna do another video series on how we powder coat these as well. There's a couple of tricks we've learned. But um, we've to date have been engraving them one at a time because I haven't gotten around to building a bigger fixture for it. So let's do that today. We're gonna make a fixture for the Tormach that we can set these plasma cut target faces on six at a time, and we're gonna have that machine. It's a huge step for productivity because I can drop six on it, hit go, walk away, and come back in however long it takes. The first video is gonna be on SolidWorks, and it's gonna be a really good lesson because we're gonna talk about something, uh, we're gonna talk about leveraging existing geometry, and especially in the 2D sketch mode, so that we can make use of that as we wanna create a fixture with certain reliefs, Mickey Mouse corners, um, edge reliefs, and so forth. Not reinventing the wheel, trying to be smart in our CAD. The second video, we're gonna hop into CAM, Sprout CAM 9, also going to use some pretty cool tricks, I think, on how to select the right geometry, both in 2D contouring and in um, roughing water lining so we can get Sprout to do what we want to create efficient tool pass and then we'll machine the fixture plate and then at the end we'll run uh, our first batch of these. Let's dive right in. So first up, let's walk through how I'm going to create a fixture in SolidWorks. I've talked a lot about fixturing in some recent videos and how I've grown and matured a lot and I try to do fixtures by doing very simple things like just drilling holes or reaming them for dowel pins to avoid machining. This is something where I actually am going to machine something for a few reasons. One is it's going to be quick, it's not gonna be difficult to machine, not a lot of material removal. But the other thing is that um, you might laugh, but I found that as a business owner, the fewer decisions I have to make and really weigh on, the more productive I can be throughout the day. There's only so much you can do during the day, if you will. So I have an idea how I wanna make this. If I wanna change it six months down the road, fine. For now, I want something that works. So here's the shape we want to fixture. How are we gonna make this fixture? We are going to edit the sketch that has the profile of the shape. Control A, Control C, that copies it. Close. New part. We're just gonna assume sort of the maximum travel of the Tormach and that'll dictate then how many we can fixture and what the size looks like. So we'll call it 18 by nine. It actually might be nine and a half, but we'll just do that for now. Extrude that out to 0.5. Who knows if that'll be what the material we use or not. Again, just bang along here. Now, new sketch on this plane, paste. That pastes our geometry in here. Now, we want to rotate that. I have done some preliminary thinking about this, and I think it's going to be more efficient to have it rotated 90. So we will rotate it on that point 90 degrees. And again, hit Control A. We can drag it around. You know, let's put it about here for now. So we've got our shape. Now this is a very loose tolerance to fixture, which is, I admit, unusual. Generally, fixturing is not a loose tolerance proposition. 
So what are we going to do is we're going to offset this by 5, five thou because it's okay. I, I don't want these to never fit in here and I don't care if they wobble around a little bit. We'll choose to make the base construction. That means it'll only be, we'll only be left with the solid line that we want. Click OK. Now we can extrude that down to say 50 thou. Oops. Uh, did boss extrude instead of boss cut. Okay. Okay, now we need to add Mickey Mouse corners here because you cannot use a round end mill to mill a square corner. And we know that this is basically the shape of the workpiece itself. So the best way to do that is the hole wizard. We're gonna choose a legacy hole and we're gonna have it be a diameter of 0.25 and we'll go down point, you know, again, 50 thousandths and positions. Now these will just snap to, and that's what makes this so quick. Not to mention it retains its parametric shapes, if you will, or style so that we could make changes to the diameter or locations and so forth. Now, if you think about dropping, you can, we know we can machine that with an eighth inch end mill, and then you can then drop the part into there and you will not have corner problems. Now, the other problem is that plasma cut parts can sometimes have some slag or dross left on the ends. We usually um, have a tumbling process that gets rid of a lot of that, but nevertheless, I think it's gonna be easier to make sure that's not an issue. So, let's go ahead and suppress these. So to create another recess, all I wanna do is have a little trough around here that will make sure that if there's a little piece of dross on the edge, it won't set uh, uneven in the fixture. It's important for engraving. So I'll create a new sketch on that plane. I'm going to do offset entities. I'm going to choose that again. And this time I'm going to come in 0.125. Um, and let's make sure I'm okay with that. Yep. Now this time I don't want to make the base construction. Because now I want to extrude, cut, Let's see here. Okay, and then, sorry, I lied, hold on. Bear with me here. We'll edit this sketch. And then we are also going to convert entities. Now, sorry, there we go. Now we can go ahead and extrude cut, and that's gonna extrude our little trough down around that another 50 thousandths. You'll notice what I'm not having to do is retrace this stuff. I can make use of the existing geometry. Similar situation here where I've got, we can unsuppress these. I've got some corners I cannot machine, so let's go back, whole wizard, same stuff as there. Let's hear this, positions, those two I can't machine. Let's see here. Otherwise, those are the only inside corners. Okay. Voila. Look at that. Now what we'll do, linear pattern. First dimension is this way. Second dimension is that way. Let's see what they look like. Features to repeat will be everything. Make sure that looks right. Oops, not sure how I screwed that up. Oh, I accidentally linear repeated the uh, the boss extrude one, which I didn't want to do. Okay, that looks good. And in the same linear pattern on the direction two. We'll do
something like that. And now we get an idea that that's, you know, six is all we're going to comfortably fit on the Tormach. This is superfluous material. If we have a smaller workpiece, we can use to make the fixture great. And then let's go ahead and add some center line holes. So I'll do a, a line, and then I'll do make that 0.25, and then delete that extrude cut. And then again, I'll do a linear repeat, a linear pattern, like so. Save this fixture base plate. And we'll do a new part. Sketch. We'll do a you know one inch strap clamp and see how that looks. We'll do a new assembly. We'll add the fixture base. We'll add the strap clamp, and then let's go ahead and insert a sample work piece. Okay, and then we'll make it mate it to the bottom. And we're going to want that a little bit wider as we look here, we look from the side, not holding quite enough of both. And in fact, we'll do a linear repeat on the, the uh, actual work pieces so we can see them. Okay, so we're going to make that strap a little bit bigger. And we'll go ahead and make a hole in it. And we'll adjust that mate from being coincident to being parallel. That way I can adjust this. And then what we'll do for now, just to get this moving along, is we'll just have those line up. And let's look at that. So we've got pretty good contact over each of these. Now, the question that I have, as much as you guys may have, is if you're only bracketing down along the center here, are you going to end up pushing up the outside edges a little? I don't think so, but that's the question. And there's lots of solutions to it, um, you know, complicated and simple, but this is what we're going to run with for now. I can hide that strap for now. And most importantly, at least in this part of the SolidWorks, I wanted to show just how important it is to make use of existing geometry when you're creating fixtures and especially making use out of the, um, oh, what's it called? The uh, 
move entities and offset entities and convert entities tools to grab that 2D geometry so that you can create the necessary cuts as well as the whole tool. Sure beats trying to use uh, sketches and 2Ds with, with dimensions if you want to change these all on the fly, quite easy to do so. So we'll come back in the next episode here to uh, do the cam and sprut cam. And then I think in the same video, we're going to machine this on the Tormach and then put it to uh, put through a test drive. If you've enjoyed this video, folks, I do appreciate the thumbs up, the comments, the likes, the shares. I will see you soon. Thanks.